Hey everybody, welcome to the next edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog and the first edition of the blog for 2016. If you can't tell already, what we're going to be talking about in this edition of the video blog is squatting and how squatting applies to soccer. So there are dozens, if not hundreds, of different variations of the squat exercise that can be performed. What I'm gonna to try to do today is simplify that and choose the one best type of squat for soccer players. The best kind of squat for a soccer player to do is a back squat. And a back squat basically just describes doing a squat with a weight, typically a barbell, that is loaded on the back of the body, typically sitting on the shoulders, above the scapulae or shoulder blades, and around the acromion process, which is the point at the tip of the shoulders. Putting a heavy weight in that position is advantageous, not just for soccer players, but for any other athlete, because as the athlete squats downwards, the weight or load is kept as close to the spine or hip joint as possible. This allows for a heavy load to be carried without putting undue strain on the lower back that might come from a load which is carried farther away from the spine or hip joint. In addition to the advantage in using a back squat that a heavier load can be used versus other types of squats, specifically for soccer players, there are several other advantages of a back squat versus other types of squats. Soccer players in the course of training and games get a lot of loading to the anterior or front side of the thigh from all the decelerations, cutting movements, and stops and starts that are involved in training and match play. What this does is places a, a strain on the quadricep muscle in the front of the thigh and also on the tendon and joint where the quadricep inserts, which is the knee joint and the patellar tendon. So a back squat because it loads the posterior or back side of the body more than it does the anterior or front side, is going to place less strain on the muscle in the front of the thigh, the quadricep, and also less strain on the knee joint. Other types of squats, for example, front squats, where the weight is carried in the front of the body, or a goblet or wide squat where a dumbbell is held in the front of the body, will load the anterior or front side of the body more and thus place a little bit more strain on the quadriceps and knee joints. For a soccer player, because of all the other loading that they get to that quadricep and knee joint, ideally they would want to use an exercise that doesn't load those areas as much, like a back squat. Back squats have even more advantages for soccer players versus other types of squats. Another type of squat which is commonly used is a wide squat, where the stance of the feet is placed actually farther apart than shoulder width. These types of squats are more effective for targeting the uh, adductors or the muscles on the inside of the thigh and also the hip flexors. Again, specifically for soccer players, because they get a lot of strain and loading on the adductors or the muscles on the inside of the thigh and hip flexors just through the twisting and different types of kicking movements that they do, doing a squat that activates and uses those muscles more may increase the likelihood of strain and overuse injuries. So again, a back squat where the load is placed posteriorly on the back side and targets mostly the muscles in the back of the leg, which are the gluteals and the hamstrings, as opposed to the groin adductors and hip flexors, this will be a more advantageous exercise for a soccer player because it does not place any more strain on those muscles. The way to perform a back squat is to stand with the barbell touching the shoulders above the shoulder blades, and typically the bar is going to be held about the point of that acromion process on the top of the shoulder. Your shoulder blades should be pulled towards each other and squeezed together, and the elbows should be pointing a little bit more backwards behind you rather than downward. What that does is that creates a bit of a shelf, so even if you are holding a heavy weight, there's no danger of the weight falling as you squat down or move backwards. The bar should stay parallel to the ground the whole time. 
I want to draw attention to my stance quickly in that my feet are maybe a little bit wider than my shoulders and the toes can point forward or they can point outward a little. This depends on flexibility and what you're comfortable with, but they should not be pointing totally out to the side and definitely they should not be pointing inward like that. So that's the stance, keeping the bar parallel to the ground. The actual squat movement involves bending at the hip and the knee all the way down to the point at which the hips are below the knees and in this position the knees should still be pointing forward or slightly outward as should the toes the back held flat and straight and the head held up once this position is maintained for about a count of one second squeezing with the muscles in the back of the leg and the front of the leg to come back up the heels must stay on the ground at all times and ideally, there should be limited to no forward lean. So if you notice the position of my upper body as I squat down, I'm keeping my chest up and my head up so as to avoid any forward lean. In terms of tempo for the exercise, I like to use two seconds on the way down and one second on the way up, something like this. One, two, up. One, two, up. So a final important factor that needs to be discussed when looking at how to use a back squat for soccer players is the weight used and the number of sets and reps. For most players, especially people who are beginners with this exercise, the weight should be relatively light and starting with three sets of 15 repetitions with about one minute and one and a half minutes of rest in between sets will work fine. To progress the weight and the number of sets and reps, I like to move towards three sets of 12 repetitions with a heavier weight and a minute and a half of rest, then three sets of eight to 10 repetitions with an even heavier weight, but two to two and a half minutes of rest in between sets. 15 reps, the phase with three sets of 12 reps, and the phase with three sets of eight to 10 reps can last anywhere from two to three weeks. This should take you throughout the entire preseason in soccer and give you a good base of strength in the lower body so that then when you want to do other types of training such as Olympic lifting or power and plyometric exercises, the muscles in the lower body will be a little bit more prepared and ready to do it. Thank you all for watching this edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you want more information, you can visit www.soccerfitness.ca or www.soccerfitnessgoals.com.